Good rest day working moms and welcome back to So This Is Motherhood. I am going to be doing 2019 in review. Stay tuned. Good rest day working moms and welcome back to So This Is Motherhood. If this is your first time tuning in, I just want to say thank you so very much for, for clicking and for choosing to spend your Sunday with me. Me and Baby Virgo here are going to give you a very quick but very informative 2019 in review. So I left you guys hanging last year and I wanted to apologize for that. Um, uh, as you know, I was driving a lot for my apprenticeship. Um, all summer I was in Cleveland and I was pretty burnt out. I was driving over, what, hundreds of miles a week. It was insane. The, don't even get me started on the tolls and how much money I spent on gas. I was pretty exhausted. So needless to say, when that job ended, I couldn't have been more thrilled. Um, I was very happy to get a local job in the local schools. Um, so that started out actually pretty well. Um, I was doing my basic 7 a.m. to 3, Monday through Friday. Then the schools wanted their deadline meet. So, you know, before the school year started. So... Then we started working at 6.30 in the morning. Ooh, are you getting down? Okay. And then it started being 6 a.m. and it just kept growing and growing, like as far as like the times that they wanted us to work. As you guys know, Baby Virgo likes to get into things. Um, my, when I first, my first day I started with a new contractor at the, um, at the schools, I sliced my hand open and I ended up going to the urgent care and I ended up with four stitches. If you guys followed my Instagram, um, up here in that corner there, I posted it as soon as I went in. Um, I did, however, archive it, so if you want to check out those gnarly stitches, it's under uh, my highlights called work with the uh, lightning bolts. And then, of course, um, shortly after, I was on day turn, they decided to switch us to afternoons, so that totally put a damper in everything for my schedule. It really messed up my flow, Whoa! my routine, especially with people before go. And then, not only was I ended up on a short call, then I got laid off shortly after, so I went to my side hustle for a little while, and they're like, well, no, you're just being transitioned. I'm like, okay, so where am I going? Oh, we don't know, but you're getting transitioned. Okay. I believe I was in transition for like, a week or two, and then I ended up out in Orwell. Yes, I went out, I ended up out in Orwell, which is about a 40 minute drive from where I live, and um, literally within my first two weeks of being there, this older lady who's a journeyman was trying to get me like, like fired. It was insane. Thankfully, we had a, a union steward on, on the site, so she, of course, advocated for me, you know, and didn't let them try to give me an um, It was really, really not a pleasant experience. It was definitely a hostile work environment. If you pick up, I'm gonna put down. Anakin, please stop. And uh, no, 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 no. Excuse me. So anyway. Um, <clears throat> It was a pretty much a hostile work environment. It was, I dreaded going, but it was nice to be working, you know, consistently, so to speak, and only having like a one or two break, one or two week break, I should say. Um, so fast forward to October, Bye. hi baby, October 2019, and I just, Anakin's really sick at this point. He's had another double ear infection. And I finally have him evaluated by a rise of functional therapist because he's just, he can't get the drainage out. We're doing everything like honey, all the home remedies in the book. And he just can't break, get out of this whole like mucus, sinus drainage nonsense. And he's snoring and his apnea has gotten worse. So I take him to a rise of functional therapist, the best there is. And we learn that, you know, he has a mylo occlusion so his top jawline and his bottom jawline should only have a one millimeter gap between the two of them and his is four millimeters and we believe it's because his tongue tie reattached 
when he was three weeks and I want to say four or five days old, we had his tongue and his lip tie re uh, revised. And I know it's a super controversial subject, but he was a miserable baby. He was screaming all the time. He had colic. He was gassy. He was uncomfortable. And I knew he was in pain just by how he was screaming. And I kept saying, even when he was first born, you know, um, you know, there's something wrong with yeah. with him. I'm like, there's something wrong with his lip. I could tell. And he was class three lip tie with a posterior tongue tie. So I'm kind of very upset that that procedure didn't really work for him and his tongue tie reattached. But as far as the mysofunctional therapist is concerned, well, what she told me was, yeah, ties revision changed the form, but not the function. So because he was too little to like really do like extensive exercises to get those muscles working and I wasn't able to afford to continue the cranial sacral therapy that he was doing when he was little. You know, I would have to drive an hour out of the way and driving an hour with a three month old was just not happening. And spending $100 out of pocket, my husband would have killed me. Even though I had made a decent paycheck while I was on my postpartum leave, it still wouldn't have been enough and it would have been feasible at that time. So, hindsight being 2020, no better, do better. Um, I don't have any regrets in what I did for him because he started breastfeeding a lot better and we started seeing the Cairo more often and that actually helped him quite a bit. So, I'm very grateful for what we did, but um, now we have to like just keep doing more interventions. She recommended his tongue getting clipped again. I am not okay with that. Not at his age, not that I can't deal with the trauma not being able to explain to him what's going on. So we are going, our plan of action is to focus heavily on releasing the tension around the tie, soft tissue wise with like massage techniques. And then we're gonna do therapy when he's closer to three, we're gonna use a mile my chi, um, which is like a, um, a brace that he can chew on to help put pressure on his jawline, to help push it go forward. So I, I see good results coming with that. Um, I tried doing it earlier because there was success in Australia as young as 18 months going forward, but that's not the case. So now I just have to be very patient and just wait for him to be closer to three so that we can start that kind of therapy. Um, and he had another ear infection shortly after that, and he, the uh, clindamycin that they gave him, which was a oral suspension, did not work. It did not clear up the ear infection, and no one was willing to tap his ear to see if the fluid in his ears was viral or if it was bacterial, and uh, <clears throat> and it didn't clear it up, and he ended up having to get six shots of Rosefin over the course of three days till Halloween, and that was awful. He was terrified the whole time, and now I, he's deathly afraid of, like, doctors, and I'm, I'm so, I feel so guilty, and I hate that I did that to him, but it wasn't working. So I knew at this point that something had to be done, but I didn't know what, and I was considering tubes and everything else like that, but I didn't have a sign or a confirmation. So I'm still driving over an hour home round trip. Like I'm driving 40 minutes to work, 40 minutes home, and then um, my husband's all the way out in Akron, so that's over an hour away. So we're tired, exhausted, just going through the motions, waiting for the holiday to kick in. And then right before... Thanksgiving he gets laid off and he comes to work with me in Orwell which is nice. He's already feeling some kind of way because of how hostile they've been treating me up there. Um, the upside of everything like that though is that our bond really grew between my husband and I so I can't really complain about that. It was great to work with him and to carpool and like eat together and like see how he works and he can see how I work and we gave each other pointers. It was really really nice. Um, and as you can see my walk journey is flourishing. That has been an amazing highlight of 2019. Um, this is, of course, you know, the shrinkage is real. Um, I'm going to slide right here in a second, and I'm going to show you what my locks look like when they were retwisted last time in November. Beautiful, right? Oh, my gosh. I, I'm so proud of them. And then, let's see. Um, December. So December rolls around. I'm really excited. I got everything ready for Christmas. And my husband and I both get laid off on December 13th. Friday the 13th at that. So it was kind of ironic and actually kind of funny. I'm not really... Oh, excuse me. I'm not really upset about it. It was going to happen anyway. Oh, excuse me. 
Um, but of course, like, a week goes by and he's back to work and I'm still at home with baby Virgo, even now, here the, um, on, in January, I'm still home. But it's okay, I got my side hustle, I can work the hours I want to work, he has daycare, I can work all the hours I need to make ends meet. Um, but that's basically been my year in review. Um, Christmas, I really don't want to talk too much about Christmas because my Christmas was a combination of horrible and fantastic. Um, I'll make that a subject for next Sunday. I'm going to talk about that. Because it involves things like toxic, toxic in-laws and cutting off toxic people in your life. And um, when toxic people, even if they're extended family, wedge their way into your marriage and cause conflict. Yeah, we're going to go deep and we're going to go there, fam. That's what we're dealing with. So, um, despite how horrendous my holidays were, slash nice my holidays were, um... We did, I did take a trip. I took full advantage of the spirit of Yule and the 12 days of Christmas as I'm going through transition in my life. And um, I spent some time with a good friend of mine and we celebrated her son's third birthday and she absolutely loved and adores my son. And it was just amazing to be around people that truly love me. I got to see my father, I got to see my aunt, my uncle. And um, it was a beautiful, beautiful experience. Um, when I came home from my trip, um, we got a phone call from uh, Acker Children's Hospital, which is like the greatest hospital ever for children out here. And they were like, do you know this is Anakin's fourth ear infection um, in, th in six months? Have you read, seen an ENT? I'm like, no. Um, they recommended that, you know, they connect us with one. They, it was Monday, December 29th. I got in for a consult the next day at 10 a.m. because there just happened to be a cancellation. And he said, definitely without a doubt, Baby Virgo needs tubes, and he actually needs an adenoidectomy. Finally, someone is taking his sleep apnea seriously, and the tests show that when he lays flat, his adenoids are so big that they're actually blocking his airway. Oh, thank you, baby. Yes, I see it. That it's actually blocking his airway when he's breathing. So, um, yeah, that's why he can't breathe at night. So, and they did a hearing test, and he has constant fluid in his ears. And that's actually leading to some temporary hearing loss in his left ear. So he said there's no reason why we should delay and he should be able to get into surgery in three weeks. Yeah, by the first of the year, Anakin's adenoidectomy and tubes were scheduled. Literally within that week from December 29th of 2019 to Friday, January 3rd of 2020. I am very much impressed, and I'm very grateful that he will finally no longer be suffering, and I'll finally have that healthy baby that I know I had before, you know, daycare and everything else. Um, he was born with enlarged adenoids, so I knew he had those at four months old, but the ENT said he wasn't really ready to, like, just go and take them out because there's a chance he could grow into them. I mean... I don't know. I feel like they should have taken the fact that he wasn't breathing at night more seriously. But I am grateful to this ENT that he wasn't quick to, like, rush and, you know, do surgery. Because I don't... I know I wouldn't have consented to surgery at four months old. Absolutely not. There was just no way. So everything happens for a reason. I'm thankful that, you know, baby Virgo's going to be able to sleep. and He's going to be able to feel a lot better. And hopefully get a little bit of his, like, sleepiness under control and his, like, outbursts. So, that's my 2019 in review for you lovely ladies. Um, if you guys enjoyed um, this content and you want to hear more content from me, as you know, I post on my Instagram pretty much daily, even though I'm on layoff. It's um, So, since I've been on layoff, though, you'll see more things like recipes and just like having fun with Baby Virgo. Um, as you saw back there a little bit ago, I'm starting to get back into painting. Maybe I could show, maybe we can do some paints with me if you would like. Um, just drop a link down below. I'm not a link, I'm sorry. Drop a comment down below and tell me what you'd like to see. Um, definitely stay tuned for next Sunday because we're going to be getting into the nitty gritty of like toxic in laws and what they did over Christmas and what I did over Christmas to kind of make everybody upset with me. Should be an interesting story. I hope you guys are ready to hear it. Um, until the next one, bye.